this is his son. And this is Amala. Have you ever wondered why Amala has 108 beads? What is the significance of 108? I was helping my daughter Lilia with her math the other day, and we were going over factor trees. So I thought a factor tree might be a good way to explain to you the significance of 108. If we think about the factors that go into 108, one of the ones that we can come up with is 36 times 3. 36 is, oft, is also a very common number that we use. If you've ever joined us on certain practice days, we will do 36 prostrations before our meditation. But what about the three? The three stands for the three time periods. And those are the past, the present, and the future. Now what about the 36? Well, if we continue to use our factor tree, we can break that down even more. Six times six equals 36. Now normally, I would break this six down into prime numbers, go even further. But I'm going to stop there because this six is very important. In Buddhism, this six represents the six sense spaces. The six sense spaces are the ways that we interact with our world around us. That equals the five senses that we're most familiar with. Our eyes, our ears, our nose, our tongue or our taste, our body and what we feel. But in Buddhism, we also have a sixth sense, which is what goes on in our minds or our thoughts. So the six sense spaces are how we gather information from the world around us. What we see, what we hear, what we smell, what we taste, what we feel, and the thoughts that we have. This six, I'm gonna break down even further. Two times three. The two and the three are also very important numbers. Let's start with the three first. There are three different types of feelings that we can have. They are pleasant feelings, unpleasant feelings,
Or sometimes we have feelings that aren't really pleasant or unpleasant, and so we call them neutral. The two represents the two states that those feelings can occur in. And those are worldly and unworldly. Sometimes I like to think of unworldly as more of extra worldly. Let me describe that to you. A worldly, pleasant feeling would be something that just feels good to us. And that worldly, pleasant feeling we could have through our eyes. Perhaps we see something that is pleasant to us. A beautiful sunset. That would be a worldly, pleasant sight. And that worldly, pleasant sight could have happened in the past, in the present, or maybe it's going to occur in the future. But what's an unworldly feeling? unworldly feeling or otherworldly is anything that helps lead us to the end of suffering. That which helps us along the path. So maybe a pleasant unworldly feeling might be the feeling you get from meditation, the peace of mind that you might feel. When we combine worldly and unworldly with pleasant, unpleasant, and neutral feelings, recognized by our six sense bases in the past, present, and future, that brings us to 108. And the interesting thing is, those are all 108 different things that we could become attached to or averse to. So if we're using a mala and counting out the beads, taking a deep breath, breathing all the way in and all the way out, we can use these beads to help us concentrate Try to concentrate on a pleasant, worldly sight of the past, or a pleasant, worldly smell from the past, a pleasant, worldly taste from the past. a pleasant, worldly feeling from the past. Even a pleasant, worldly thought from the past. When we go through all of it, we end up with 108. Or maybe we don't have time to do 108 breaths or 108 prostrations. So maybe we'll only do 36. Six sense spaces times worldly and unworldly times pleasant, unpleasant, and neutral feelings equals 36. This is a great way to help focus our minds and to concentrate 
And as we get used to focusing our minds on all of these different feelings that we can have, and understanding that whether they are a worldly feeling or an unworldly feeling, there's a danger to becoming attached to it or averse to it and trying to get away. Always knowing, clearly knowing, that any one of these 108 types of feelings can become attachments. I hope that was helpful for you in explaining the significance of 108. If you have any thoughts or questions, feel free to comment down below. And don't forget to like our page from the Grand Rapids, Grand Rapids Buddhist Temple. Be well.